Hey, I'm Luke with SNS Diesel Motorsport. We're going to do a bit of an unboxing today. It's a little bit different than normal. So normally we don't do uh, much in the way of comparing to other products or negative marketing or, you know, kind of highlighting flaws in other people's designs. We typically just try to educate and make the best product we possibly can, let the customers decide. So this is a little different because we've become aware lately that there's some Chinese knockoffs popping up on Amazon that are a very similar clone to ours. We spent a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of effort on that product and seeing uh, clones pop up <clears throat> is frustrating for sure, but also we just want to educate people. So um, this will be a bit of an unboxing to see basically what looks similar online. We'll see what you actually get. So here's two different ones. Uh, both of these say that they're uh, disaster prevention kits for the 2011 and up Fords. This is a model 520, since that's maybe that's the China equivalent to an F250 as an F520. Um, and uh, you can see basically here's our product, here's one version, here's another version. Two different companies doing a similar thing that released them similar time. So I don't know what the actual strategy is there, but quick comparison. A lot of you guys probably know this is basically what this looks like. You got your filter head filter, uh, bypass block, um, and all the components uh, necessary down below. Instructions, uh, all the install components, custom made fittings, all that stuff kind of lays in nicely. We spent a lot of time on packaging as well to make it present well and uh, be something to be proud of. So <clears throat> anyways, we'll get that one out of the way. Alternative number one. Uh, this is $400. These are $350. So, yep, uh, maybe you say 50 bucks. We'll see if that's worth it to you. These are interesting looking instructions. They did a good job on these. Uh, you might notice, looks pretty much freaking identical to these. So, uh, they couldn't bother to write their own instructions. They probably don't even have a truck to do any test fits or installs on or any testing whatsoever. As you've seen, we've actually done destructive testing, proof of concept testing, test bench testing, all that. Guaranteed that doesn't exist. Uh, Photoshop our logos off the blocks. Um, identical clones to our instructions. The silver truck that you guys might have seen us do the first destruction video on, all these pictures are actually from that truck. It's actually a picture in here of one of my employees' faint, uh, hands holding apart. So. Anyway, good job on the instructions, guys. So here's the hose assembly, bypass kit hose assembly. Let's see what that looks like. There's a filter head with a, surely a Donaldson filter, right? Good quality filter, maybe? Let's lay this out. So, looks similar to ours. A T, quick connects. Bypass block that goes on the pump. What are we working with here? Hmm. Looks like that'd be good for in a truck carrying fuel. Rubber air hose. And uh, I don't know how that'll last in fuel or diesel fuel, but some guys that want to save 50 bucks, I guess, are going to find out. We got uh, worm clamps here. Um, we've converted everything. We never actually used those, but we'll use an Autoker style crimp clamp. Since there's lots of these in the kit, it gets done by a calibrated pneumatic crimper to get the exact same crimp on all of that. So depending on uh, if the child that assembled this thing did a good job of tightening these clamps up or not, I guess is whether you're going to have leaks or not. I did glance at this beforehand, full disclosure, so I kind of identified where I would have concerns. Um, one thing that is uh, really important is this comes straight from your factory filter and this goes straight into the inlet of your pump. So what comes through here goes straight into your pump. Um, the purpose of this is to prevent debris from getting there. Uh, what I've found is this thing is actually full of debris as new because even though these also look like the legit uh, OE high quality quick connects that we use, same logos and everything molded in. They're full of debris. I'll try to get another angle on it here. Plastic molding, uh, flashing, 
all kinds of junk down in there. So our hoses get cl very closely inspected, blown out with air, um, the whole deal. So identical clones of our bracket, spacer, other cheap junk hose. <clears throat> so this is a same cheap rubber air hose instead of fuel hose. These fittings, the only reason these fittings are designed this way was because I wanted to have a nice flat to machine our logo into to just make it a nicer polished finish. So they, did, they cloned the design, but obviously no logo. So it's interesting to see they actually added some expense and trouble just to match our design, but without our logo. Same for these fittings. This doesn't necessarily have to be designed this way. It just made for a little bit nicer, easier to install fitting. You could put a socket on and uh, also some nice flats to, to do that, to put logos on. There's lots of little things that go into products that people care about. So the US manufacturers, uh, whether it's us or somebody else, there's a lot that goes into the design, a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of engineering just to make things right. Um, Sometimes that's really subtle things that you don't necessarily realize or think about. One of those is these rubber isolators. So, can't tell for sure. Yeah, actually I can tell for sure. So, the durometer of this rubber and this isolator is actually really critical. On a 2011 to 2016 truck, that's a steel cabbed truck, 17 and up went to aluminum. What we found is on those steel cabbed trucks, there's pressure pulsations in the hose on the return side. So there's just kind of natural pressure pulsations. On some trucks under certain conditions, the pressure pulsations coming from the electronic relief valve can create a vibration uh, in here, which when this is mounted on a steel cab truck, uh, in certain situations, if it's really quiet, you might hear just a little bit of a buzzing. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just the pressure pulsations in the line. This durometer of this, meaning the softness of this rubber, is actually super critical to whether that gets isolated or not. So the whole reason this is designed this way, at least in ours, is to accept a rubber isolator that's a really soft 30 uh, durometer that can isolate that vibration. These, I can tell just by feeling them, are actually stiffer. So subtle little things like that, this is going to carry vibration right into the cab and probably be pretty annoying. Pretty decent looking filter head. So at a glance, it actually looks close to ours. Um, like I say, the clamp differences, the debris that's actually embedded in here from the get-go. So you'll actually be in worse shape than when you started installing that. Let's take a look at this. So you can probably guess the only reason this thing is the shape that it is, is because we wanted it to have the nice SNS Shield logo on the top of it. It'd have been a lot cheaper and easier if they just made it square or circle, but they didn't think about that. They just thought about cloning what we had. So obviously no logo on the front. There's also no reason for this to be back here, scalloped out, except for to accept these underneath the hood of the shield. So we also take great care to closely inspect. All these things are really important for fuel system components. The cleanliness is key. So uh, I've got guys every day shining flashlights, inspecting all these things before we even put them together in the kit to make sure there's no burrs, there's no debris, there's no nothing in here. This has got a big old chunk sticking out right here into the flow path of the fuel. And uh, there's probably several more in internal passages because they're just not going to go to the trouble to actually uh, do any of that well. So, <clears throat> We selected a Donaldson filter like this to put in our kit because it's the correct size, the correct flow capacity, delta P across it, and uh, correct micron rating to be able to catch a lot of that small fine debris. So it looks like, you know, they must have uh, just copied that until you actually look at it slightly closer. It's not quite the same color. The font's slightly blurry and they just uh, happened to leave off the Donaldson logo here. Other than that, identical. They even forgot, because it must not have translated in English very well, that it says made by Donaldson right here. But if you actually look at the top of this, 
There's a rubber seal that, that seals the top plate that it threads on with to the cartridge below it. That rubber seal uh, is what keeps clean from dirty flow. This filter here, as far as I can tell, doesn't even have that. So there is a cartridge in it that's probably an unknown micron efficiency rating um, and uh, an unknown overall quality, but they sure did a good job of trying to make it look like a quality part. <clears throat> so we have efficiency tested these filters versus factory filters versus all that kind of stuff. Guaranteed none of that crap happens with the rest of these products. So that's about what you get with that one. We'll cut that filter apart too maybe and get a little bit more data to educate on basically what do you get uh, and what's the risk of the little bit of money saved. So that's about what that one's good for. Um, this is a different one that's technically a different brand and uh, but very similar but not quite. So I don't know the strategy again. Same clone of our instructions. Same pictures, same everything, like copy paste. Basically looks like same hardware kit machining. Overall packaging is pretty poor. So subtle difference because they trimmed the tip of our shield off on this one and they didn't try to exactly clone the filter. They just put a plain old white filter on there. I'm sure it's also the highest of quality. There's a big old glue goobers down in there. So we'll cut this one apart too. But there again, burrs in the threaded areas um, where uh, you don't want to have burrs in the fuel flow because that's gonna cause failures versus prevent failures. Let's see what we're working with here. Oh, they got fancy and really differentiated themselves with a black version of our exact hose or fitting. <clears throat> Similar, looks like a legit quick connect. These guys at least stepped it up and used a better clamp. If you look in the quick connects, there's still a bunch of plastic debris and material down in there that's gonna flow straight into the inlet of your pump probably junk in the hose as well. This hose doesn't have any identification on it, so don't know whether it's good or bad. That one's not as bad. <clears throat> we got a whole bunch more bubble wrap. More clones of uh, the rest of the bracket kits, all the custom made parts for it. Let's see what this, this actually is even harder than the other one. So the easiest way is to thread it in here and then you can kind of try to twist it. That is a rock hard isolator. So that's not going to do anything for dampening vibration. So, yep, more cheap stuff, untested. So anyways, it's about what I expected to find. Luckily they, luckily for us anyways, they actually do a decent job of making it look good. But if you actually look at it and look at the function of it, it isn't. Like this one, for example, we press a ball. So in order to make this passageway, you got to drill a hole through here, right? Drill a hole, which intersects here. So in order to do that, oh nice, there's a big old burr inside of that thing too, which is going right to your metering unit. The whole reason we do that is to get that intersecting hole. Well, then you got a problem. How do you plug that hole? We designed a uh, fixture and a tool and a press and dimensioned everything just right to actually press a ball into there to seal that because we didn't want to cut threads there and we didn't want to use a plug there because when you got threads, then you got... Uh, you're potentially making debris and metal with the threads. So we designed that whole thing around that. It's all those little subtle things that we're trying to prevent any problems that a customer might, might have. So they used a pipe plug here when a pipe plug does a really good job of making metal as it threads in. So there's uh, gonna be some surprises just hanging out down there waiting for some fuel to start flowing by. So anyways, 
it's about what I expected to see. Like you say, in our case, luckily they actually did kind of a poor job of um, cloning the details that matter. It might look okay from a distance, but it is still just junk. So the real deal, obviously I'm biased, but you get what you pay for. Uh, if it's worth saving 50 bucks to you, then um, you at least need to know what you're getting into. And uh, if you don't care about who you're supporting, then maybe that's not the kind of customer we want anyways. But we got a lot of guys here working real hard to design, develop, build, and test those products, as well as support them after the fact. So you install one of these things, you got questions. Um, later on down the road, if you have a pump failure and want confirmation your injectors are good, need stuff tested, my guys do that kind of stuff all the time. Um, you're definitely not gonna get any support on these other clones. And uh, it really kind of comes down to the broader picture of, I think it's, it's, it's massively a problem of IP, intellectual property, going from the US to other countries, specifically China. So this is a very small, simple version of that, to be honest. It's not that difficult of a product. It's about the simplest thing that we make here. Um, but it really gets down to who do you want to support? Every time you buy one of these, you're helping create jobs in the US. You save 50 bucks and uh, buy one of these, you're not doing a dang thing for our country and you're actually gonna run into problems because it's a flawed product. So anyways, think about what you're buying. Um, you pretty well, it's another example, you get what you pay for and uh, we appreciate the support, thanks. So we cut these different filters apart to show you what the insides of these look like. Because, um, of course, Mom always said it's what's on the inside that counts, right? So this is eye-opening, actually. It's kind of almost funny. I uh, wasn't actually expecting it to be this bad when we opened them, but I'm kind of glad we did this now. So this is uh, the filter out of uh, the s, s kit. This is a legit Donaldson filter. So the way these work is because of the way the filter head's designed, fuel flows in. Dirty fuel, if it, the pump was making metal, dirty fuel flows into here through the cartridge, through the pleats that do the filtering, and then up out through the center, through that center post, and then on to the tank and the rest of your system. So proper filter, such as the one we use, it's actually sealed on the bottom. Dirty on the outside, flows through, clean on the inside. <clears throat> so there's a rubber seal on this section here, and the top plate sits right on top of that rubber seal. So you get a nice differentiating seal to go between the two. <clears throat> That's how regular filters, real filters work, and a smooth section right here that sits in that. So that's how that one is. Here's this other Donaldson filter, right? <clears throat> similar. I don't know what micron rating this is. I'd have to guess it's probably not stellar. Notice the one thing missing is that I could actually tell from the outside of the filter there was no rubber seal up on top. So this sits here like this as it's assembled. Fuel flows through these small holes, through the outside of the pleats, through the center. As you'll notice, there's nothing actually sealing the, the clean from the dirty side here at all. This is laughable how crappy this is, uh, even though they're trying to pull the wool over your eyes with making it look like a legit filter. <clears throat> it's basically what all these kits are. Take it for what it is. As the manufacturers of the legit stuff, uh, it's pretty frustrating that they're um, doing a poor job of cloning our designs, that if people are buying those, it's taking jobs and pay away from guys here in the US. Um, really what they're doing is pulling the wool over your eyes as the consumer to make this stuff look legit until you actually get to the inside details and the functionality um, and the internal workings of things that matter and you're going to be in for a surprise using some of this kind of stuff because it's actually going to cause more problems than uh, than what it prevents so uh, and guaranteed you're not going to get one of them on the phone to help fix it after it's screwed up either way we'll show a close-up of this you can basically see daylight through the bottom of this thing Dirty side, clean side, daylight through the middle. This isn't gonna seal at all or do any kind of good filtration to actually do its job. 
This is from that other kit. They at least didn't attempt to make it look legit to try to fool you too awful much. Another canister, it's actually smaller, shorter, so it doesn't have as much filter media, you know, catching capacity, but it's not the end of the world. But also there's no seal at all up top. It's metal to metal, at least in this case, there's a little bit of a ridge, but it's sealing with a little bit of metal contact and wishful thinking is basically what's trying to hold this one together. There again, it's not gonna do a good job of sealing the clean and, the clean and dirty sides away from each other. Um, it's, uh, it's pretty well a joke also of a filter. So they, decent attempt of trying to make them look good, hilariously laughable attempt of actually making them function well. So 